Yo ho ho, so today I want to talk about some books that took their emotional toll on me at the time that I read them and basically turned me into a husk of a human being that you see before you today. But no, I just want to talk about some books that ruined my life because I think it's a good subject to talk about. So the first book I want to talk to you about is Prozac Nation, Young and Depressed in America by Elizabeth Wurzel. This is a memoir on Elizabeth Wurzel's life and her battle with depression. I read this when I was about 15 and I was struggling myself with depression and I just was having a really hard time understanding what I was going through, trying to figure out how to manage it. And this really helped and it opened my eyes, but it was also really, really rough. It took me a very long time to read it. It took me about three or four months, maybe even five months to actually finish it because I had to keep putting it down because I was just finding it a bit too raw. But it's an excellent portrayal of the frustration that comes along with depression, not only with the person who's suffering from it, but with everyone around them, because that's something that you don't think about it. Like, when you're in the throes of it, you just think it only affects you. But in reality, it affects your friends, your family, everyone who's around you and who comes into contact with you. It's difficult to try to get through every day when you're dealing with it, when you just sometimes don't want to bring yourself to leave the house. The section in this that really upset me is actually in the afterword where Elizabeth Wurzel talks about doing her book readings and book signings and the type of people that come up to her afterwards. Specifically one area where she talks about how a lot of single mothers come up to her and they look exhausted, they look like they're absolutely riddled with anxiety because at home they have a child who's not communicating, who's shutting themselves off from the world. They're at their wits end because they don't know how to cope. They don't know how to help their child. And it really upset me because she was basically just describing my mother, like down to the T. It just deeply distressed me at the time when I read it. You don't intend to be selfish when you are suffering from mental illness, but it can happen and, you know, you have a very small view of the world. But it was able to take me out of that for a moment and realize like hey you know it's not just about you and um i don't know i think that's like a pretty big deal for like a 15 year old to finally realize like it's not all about you barbara next i want to talk about the diary of a young girl by anne frank i reread this last year i originally read it when i was 13 when i was in school didn't like it i absolutely hated it i thought this is this is going to sound awful to say but i thought anne was really moany and whiny i found the story boring um i didn't like that i had to read aloud it's just everything that went along with this book at the time when i read it originally was just awful i decided to reread it last year because I thought it would be interesting to read it from an adult perspective. Oh my god. Like, okay, so I'm just gonna start off by saying, yes, obviously it's been heavily edited. Because everyone's pretty much dead now, we can't actually know for sure how much of it is edited, but just utterly heartbreaking. Everyone knows the story, but for some reason, I was sitting on the bus when I was finishing it on my way home. I just came so close to just breaking down and crying. I think what really upset me is that how positive Anne was, even up until the end, and how she was had all these hopes and dreams for herself of like, just simple things like starting school next September, and you know, in your head you're doing the countdown and you know like that's not gonna happen, and it's just, it's really awful. But I recommend to anyone who read this as a young child to give it a reread, you know, especially if you didn't enjoy it because it is very eye-opening. Next is Flowers for Al, Journal by Daniel Keyes. Okay, if you've been on my channel for a while, you've heard me talk about this enough and you're probably like, oh, stop talking about this book, Roya. Like, please, talk about another book. No, I won't. I still have some things to say, though I'm probably repeating myself. This is about a man called Charlie Gordon who is intellectually disabled. He goes for testing at a university and um, they're just trying out some new drugs on him to see if it will have any improvement in his IQ and it does but unfortunately there's actually a time limit on this and Charlie will eventually revert back to his original IQ and it's just a really sad fucking story when he realizes you know basically that there is a time limit and it's something like all us human beings know that there is a certain time limit that we're not going to be here forever it's just a heartbreaking read and the moment in this book that made my lip wobble was when we find out where the title comes from. That upset me 
so much. Like, I can't even tell you. Like, it's just thinking about it now is making me quite sad. It's just, it's, you know, it's beautiful. It's not the greatest novel in the world, but it's for what it is. I really enjoyed it. Well, you know, as, as much as you can enjoy reading something that's a very, very sad story. But again, it's another one I recommend if you're into reading sad books. Next book is one that I don't have a copy of because I read it when I was in school and I rented it from the school library. But that is Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. Now, those of you may be aware that I don't have a very particularly good relationship with John Steinbeck. I appreciate his work for what it is, I appreciate his writing, but I don't like it in the sense of that it's far too depressing for me. And I love reading depressing stuff, but it's just way, it's too much for me. And I read Of Mice and Men when I was 14. I want to say I hated it, but I didn't hate it. I did, I loved it. Like, I thought it was great. I know the story isn't going to go the way I wanted it to go. And I know it wouldn't be a very good story if it went the way I wanted it to go. But my god, it's just like, George is such an asshole and I'm still harboring really negative feeling towards him because all Lenny wanted was just a little pet. Sure, he was like a big dude who wasn't aware of his own strength and things, but like he just wanted a little pet. Fucking betrayal and uh, accusations and it's just, oh fucking hell. Like it really, really, really upset me. Like 14 year old me was triggered to say the least. But that really put me off reading any more of John Steinbeck's work. I, I will probably pick up some, maybe some more of his books, but I just, I know all of his books are like that and they're all depression era. And I'm just like, I don't think the depression era is particularly for me. The last book I wanna talk about is Requiem for a Dream by Hubert Selby Jr. Now Hubert Selby Jr is known for his depressing as shit novels. In this novel it's Harry Goldfarb who is a heroin addict and it follows him and his mother Sarah who is a food addict but also a slimming pill addict and it just has to be it's probably the most depressing novel I've ever read because nothing works out for any of the characters. It's just a downward spiral for them all. I think this book hit a nerve even more because it's it's about addiction and if you if you know anyone who's suffering from addiction or who has suffered in the past, it's rough because when I was reading it, I was able to identify with certain characters and realize that they harbor the same traits that like some of my family members do and it is a really fucking horrible feeling when you're just like, oh, that's just like so-and-so. Oh, it breaks your heart and it frustrates the hell out of you. You have to just take a step back and realize there's nothing you can do. Sometimes, you know, people have to hit rock bottom and sometimes people's rock bottoms is dying and you just have to learn to live with really. But yeah, the other thing that's quite interesting about this novel is that the way Hubert Selby Jr. writes is that he doesn't use quotation marks. It really absorbs you into the story because you really have to pay attention to what's going on otherwise you're not going to know who's talking, who said what. I desperately want to complete all of Hubert Selby Jr.'s works but I'm putting it off because I know it's going to be really, really heavy and I don't know if I'm particularly in the mood for it at the moment. I have to be in a really good mood to read really depressing stuff and really good moods don't come around a lot for me so it might be a good while but The Room is going to be the next one of his that I, I read. If you want uh, to read a book that will leave you a dried out husk of a human being, this is the book for you. So those have been the books that have ruined my life. Let me know if you've read any books that just completely destroyed you at the time that you read them. And I hope you enjoy this video and I will talk to you soon. Goodbye.